Hi everyone, this is Mike Gordon, and welcome to another Let's Play of Final Fantasy VI Advance. This is sadly not a live commentary on the video. I had to replace the previous audio because it was unusable. So I hope to do my very best with this version this time around. Now we're going to do Saturn Story, and we're going to buy 99 shurikens from this guy. After that, we're going to recruit Shadow, and, well, I'm going to explain a few things. As you know, I use the microphone built into my laptop. However, the audio was literally unusable the last time around. So what happened was I considered taking a little bit of a breather until my new microphone comes in. However, I can't, however the microphone was delayed by about a day or two. It's set to arrive hopefully tomorrow. And I can't just afford to wait until indefinitely until the uh, until my recording stop until my new uh, microphone comes in and I can hook it up. So instead I'm just going to... So instead I decided I'm just going to do a play-by-play -play and do commentary on this video as we watch. As you can see, yes, this is Visual Boy Advance I'm playing on emulator. No, I'm not using cheat codes and I'm not I'm not you and I'm not gonna use save states. I wanna try to emulate playing the game as if it were on an actual Game Boy Advance as much as humanly possible to show that this is actually re doable for anybody. Yeah, I'm gonna be shot the Gigas Club and Hyper Risk that we took off Edgar. And Sabin gets the ribbon and earring we got from Lock Scenario. And I just decided to just throw in the best stuff I have for Shadow for the time being. We don't really need to worry too much about equipping him, so to speak. So I decided to go into this house and talk to him for a few bits. You yeah, clockmaker, I've been waiting for ages! I'm not the clockmaker. This, the dialogue seems to imply that anybody could be talking to this guy at any point in the world of balance, and this would play out the same way. Oh, got it! Because there's no portrait. You're a repairman, grass 50 feet out there. No more lip repair. Fix that stove on the double. I'll be on your conscience so I freeze to death. Hmm? Then you must be. You're here to fix my bed, it's been cooking like gold, get out! Yeah, and you can actually use the bed free of charge. That's why I like to call a free in, by the way. Now, let's go fix that stove, whatever it is he's complaining about. Oh, for basic, and you call yourself a pair of man, cause troll is like kid. Kid, I don't mean kids, uh, why do you have to bring up kids? Makes it sick just thinking about it. I think it's time for you to leave out, go and get, well, toss you onto the belt, too. Yeah, of course he's crazy. You know, now we're just going to save Buffer all the way to the forest. There's only two formations we really need. Those two formations are the two Nil Hopper, two Stray Cats, and the two Apern... Apern... However you pronounce them. Two Aperness and Stray Cat. We don't really need to worry about Chippy Rabbits for the time being. And there's a reset. The whole point with the whole point is technically all these encounters we go just bypass, but I decide we're going to try to spread out our belt formations as much as humanly po as much as possible while still trying to shoot for a hundred percent completion so we're not really looking for chippy rabbits or any other formations outside of the forest region and i'm about to enter get the two uranus and stray cat here 
just as per usual, you just run away from him. A previous try I considered was simply save buffering all the way to the Phantom Force and not get into any random counters. Because Stray Cat has been nerfed as a rage in the Game Boy Advance version onward. It was great when Gao could equip the Merit Award, but it's not so great in thus equip equipment. And I skip it, and I just uh, skip some level resets to get the final formation we needed. Two nail hoppers and two stray cats. So we you know if wing snap if wing snap hits it will automatically berserk a character. It won't keep us from running away or anything. Unlike sleep or stop. Or especially sleep now I think about it. Yeah, sleep and stop would keep you from running away. It would act sleep is even worse, it resets your ATB gauge. So I'm just say buffering here. Alright. And this took a and this was a bit annoying. It took us like two or three tries to reset all this and make it to that patch of desert. And I'm gonna save my game for emer for the purposes of a in case of emergencies. The next couple fights could get a little rough. Oh, the payroll soldiers around here. Yup, and they are going to war with Doma. So, anyways, with all that said, I've decided that I'm going to slow. I'm not going to put anything on hiatus concerning my let's plays. I'm just going to put them on the back burner and wait for while I'm juggling several projects I'm doing in the real world. So no, I'm not taking a hiatus. I would probably say I will be doing part 6 immediately after this. I'm taking a break from my homework assignments. I've already finished the assignment that's due tonight. So, after this, I'm going to go straight to part 6 of my Let's Play series. And I'm going to then finish the rest of my homework. Yeah, Kafka's kind of a unscrupulous steed bag, while Leo is an honorable man. That's what these soldiers are talking about. And they're about to invade Doma Castle. Believe it or not, this event was actually referenced in Lock Scenario. The reason Celis had turned traitor was because, well, we'll see what Kafka plans to do to the Domitians. And, yep, we are... <laughs> yeah, great tactics, just run into the wall over and over again castle walls over and over again. I'm sure we will... Yeah, I'm sure this is it. But no, there's something else far more nefarious going on behind the scenes. And here we have probably one of the best written and most three-dimensional characters in the game. And yet, sadly enough, arguably the worst character in the game. I hate to say this, but Cyan Bushido techniques are just downright awful. Now, to be fair, in a low-level campaign, the Bushido gauge loading up isn't that big a deal because Cyan learns his Bushidos via level up, and we're not going to do that until we've got pretty much all the Espers. And I've unlocked the Dragon's Den. And yep, I wanted to give Cyan the iron armor, but I ultimately decided to give that one to Celis because tunnel armor and the gold bear formations were just giving me hell. So I've decided to, I don't, and I realized I did not remove the white cap from Terra before Ultra, so I decided to give Cyan the Hermes sandals and Knight's coat. Cyan doesn't really benefit from the from the uh, Hermes sandals, but okay. Well, I digress. 
Now, you want to pick up this formation because it's missable. Just talk to any of the brown Imperial soldiers and you'll get a times two formation. It's a missable formation and it doesn't even... And this is the only time you can fight them. But don't worry, there are these enemies do not give out any experience points. See? And we got the... Oh, sorry, that's... What you really need to do is just fight this guy. And I decided to give Cyan a potion for safety once more. Get used to that. And I am Cyan, return to the King of Doma, ready thy axe. Now, the Bashir technique, how it works, you want to charge it up until you highlight the number. And, oh, and we want to get on the two because that number two is the attack called Sky. You just wait for that captain to attack you again, and then Cyan counterattacks and just one shots the captain. And the captain counterattacks, because of course. And we got the common drop, which is Black Belt. The rare drops an antidote, if that happens, just reset. And that was the safety net I was worried about. And here's another safety net we need to take into account in the very near future. We... We return back outside... Oh! Yep, Shadow's party leader. And I thought about giving them potions, but... They aren't really that beat up, so I decided to save outside the camp so I could save buffer for the encounter in case I don't get the encounter I want. You know, that canine, we actually want to get a specific formation. You can only get one of two formations, times three or times two, we want times two. If you leave the chest alone, you can't get it. If you hit it, you get like... You get a scene of them pretending to be a cat. But if you kick it, you fight the Doberman. Yeah, it, I needed a reset. And it took one reset to get the two Doberman. Now, you can actually just run away from this fight and not miss anything for a couple reasons. Number one, they're not missable. Number two... I mean, number one, you can actually escape from them. Number two, they don't appear on the bestiary. I mean, they are definitely a missable formation. They both are. You can only get one Doberman or formation or the other, and Doberman 2 is preferable. Because it's group 6. But the third thing is it kind of costs resources, and I kind of had a brain fart on that. Shouting up using two shurikens when he didn't need to. So we're gonna head back outside. And I, at first I thought the dog respawned and I was thinking there was supposed to be a way to make that dog form, respawn over and over again so you can actually fight it. But, you know, I was wrong. Apparently Square had, de had already developed the game and had always intended for one or two of the two Doberman formations to be missable, to be missed. And I decide for the rare encounter, not just because it's rare, but because it's more efficient for belt manipulation. By the way, you can fight this battle over and over again. It's not a missable formation, in fact, it's a mandatory formation. You just don't have to fight this guy, I'm just showing, yeah, you can fight this, you can fight him, leave, and come back over and over again to farm for high potions and maybe potions as well. You don't even need to worry about using a tent or returning to the belt. Anyways, we are going to spy on to Leo, and uh, so they're using their favorite strategy. Yep, the waiting game against Magitek armor. That is about as efficient. It's about as efficient as keeping enemy formations against fought against machine guns. It's gonna end badly for the Domitians. You know, I'm not just being... And I'm not just being... 
foreboding here. It's gonna because it's gonna end badly for them. It's because well, then again, you realize that Cyan. Well, we'll find out a bit later in this episode. Yeah, uh, Emperor General Leo is a huge softy when it comes to human life. Like, how is this guy a general? Kyria Perja arrived from Emperor Gustav. Now, Kafka is scheming something, and wouldn't be surprised if this letter from Gustav was a part of Kafka's scheme to get Leo out of this camp. Because, well, what we're about to witness is quite... It is quite inhumane, to quote the characters. But before we do that, we are going to head right back outside and we are going to save our game. Because, you know, it's for safety more than anything. You don't want to get a game over and have to repeat a lot of this stuff all over again. So, I'm just going to save my game for the purposes of emergency because the very next fight is, could, could potentially end badly for us. I have no idea. I have no idea why I decided to save buffer here. The enemy formation isn't missable. So yeah, once we go into here, that first p section of the camp, we won't be able to return to. You know, once he is gone, I can turn this one a flowing river of poison. Yup, he is going to. He's going to mix. Ammonia and bleach, and give them to the emperor, and get and use it to poison Doma with mustard gas. Yeah, this is Kafka is not just a deep, a huge, huge douchebag, someone you love to hate. He is just he is despicable. He's quite sick. Yes, you just go off and be a good little boy. Goody two-shoes. Honestly, I think he said call him a goody two-shoes. Is the poison ready? But General Leo said, Leo's not here anymore, I'm in charge of Fork it over! Some of our people are being held prisoner inside the castle. If anyone were to drink the water... Who cares? They're the ones who are stupid enough to get caught by the enemy. Yeah, this is... this. You're inhuman. God, pesticide return. Guess I'll have to take care of you too. And we get a boss fight. Wait, he's not. He's, wait, this isn't a battle sprite. This is an in game. Kafka, wait. Wait, he says. Do I look like a waiter? And we have to chase after him. Yeah, sorry, but we don't. Uh, this We are not fighting Kafka proper. We are just. These are more or less just interactive cutscenes. Yes, Kepka could attack you, but he'll just do a normal attack with a chain flail. You can intercept that by physically attacking him right away. Don't bother using any of your techniques because you're not going to stop him. Do I look like a waiter? And... God, how long do you expect me to play with this? this? Next time, won't hold back. Yeah, he's also a coward too. You, yeah, I hate Kafka. And we are gonna jump down there, pick up the barrier ring before it's missing. Before we miss out on it, I just did that out of curiosity if you could actually go back. Oh, and yes, you can. Open the right chest first. I want to make. Absolutely sure everyone is at full health here. And I want to make sure they have... And I decide to give Sabin a potion for safety's sake. This battle could go wrong. Particularly if this next... Uh, and while this formation in, its, uh, in of itself isn't missable, you can still fight it in the... In the uh, Soul Shrine, we want to get it, for, not just for its rage, but for its guaranteed drop. And what you want to do is, you want to just you throw shurikens at him, and have Sabin use 
aura cannon over and over again. The ribbon is meant to protect Sabin from Satellite's counterattack. Uh, Satellite counters any of Sabin's auras with this Mega Berserk, which will automatically berserk Sabin. But but we gave him a ribbon, so he won't. So that won't ever happen. So just keep unleashing aura cannons and throwing shurikens until he dies. He can actually summon some help, some Imperial soldiers to accompany him and make the battle longer, and he could confuse your party. Inflict confusion and blind statuses on your party. He can be co and he can fire magic tech lasers, which will one-shot your party members. But I had an extremely but I had an extremely positive battle against this guy. Like, nothing outside of that Mist Aura cannon went wrong. And I gave Saban the Green Beret. You'd think you'd give it to Shadow, but, you know, I mean, Shadow will be leaving your party, and I'm going to anticipate, and I'm getting re ready for when Shadow does. Now, for this battle. Same old, same old. Just shurikens and aura can. This is because this is yet another mandatory belt encounter. You cannot miss it. In fact, the only missable formations here in the camp are, to my, the best of my knowledge, are either the Doberman encounter, Doberman 2 or Doberman 3. We chose Doberman 2. And the two Imperial Soldiers. They're the only missable belt formations. And on top of this, it makes Doberman, the Doberman Rage the one missable Rage here. Hehehe, <laughs> nothing beats the sweet music of hundreds of voices screaming in unison. Hehehe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to do the whole acting thing. I'm just going to react to the footage as I watch it. Yeah, this is really, really bad. It's Sir Cyan. There's a great deal of activity in the Imperial camp. I think they may be preparing another assault. Uh, and you hear Kepka's theme playing over this. This is just bad. Just watch. Yep. And Kepka just committed mass genocide. You know, it's going to be really, really tough talking over this, but, you know, considering what's going on, I can't be making jokes over this. Not this. This is... And I decided to switch the Black Belt onto Cyan because Cyan doesn't really benefit from the Hermes Sandals, but he can potentially benefit from the Black Belt. Not for long, I do plan on remove on giving Cyan the Giga Glove and Hyper Wrist a bit later, but for now, this is appropriate. Your Highness, who's there? Cyan, Your Excellency. Cyan, my size feeling. I can't see your face. Excellency, please, you must be strong. Cyan, we have defended this realm since the days of my far before me. I think you are you so. <clears throat> Forgive me if you'll protect our kingdom. No, Excellency, the fault lies not with thee. Fear for your family. Oh, my chest burns every breath. Speak not, my lord. Save your strength. Go to family. Oh. Excellency. Yeah, there's something a bit off about science speaking in classic English. You know, 16th century English, because most of his dialogue is pretty mock modern, so words like thee and thy kind of 
clash with this man are speaking. Yep, he is dead. Now we have to search the castle for survivors. And I decide to check here first. And there's a guy next, inexplicably next to a pot with a remedy. Tragic. Very, very tragic. Sir Siam, we were too late. Here too. Yeah, if uh, I'm not going to do another recording if my uh, voiceover messes up again. I'm I kind of prefer being a little soft spoken. I even lost my voice doing this recording last time, which contributed to the slight delay. But yeah, I needed to get a new microphone. I can't do a soft spoken voice because you can't hear it or you can barely hear my soft-spoken voice so you know and I anticipated it I all right it's on its way it should come here any day now so if you so if you see me going a day or two without posting anything on YouTube that's why I'm waiting for that microphone to come in. Now let's go in here. We can't get that chest, by the way. Do not leave me, Elaine! This, this is unpardonable. Unpardonable. Elaine! No! No! This is not possible! This cannot be happening! I will not forgive them! The Emperor must pay for this! <sighs> I am Cyan, retainer to the King of Doma! Enemy, omen to your positions! Yeah, we gotta go help. We gotta put a stop to this. But we gotta heal, and now we don't need to heal up. Turn our thought on enemy as well! Ouch, probably should have gone in the middle of that. Let me give you a hand. I know not thy name or allegiance, but I welcome thy aid. And we have to get to a series of battles, and there, these guys here are in one of two formations. Soldier times three is uh, three and fourth odds of encounter, or or one fourth odds of getting the four soldiers. Do not, you don't need to worry about getting both formations because a neither in them, neither formation appears on the belt, and b they're not even bestiary entries. They are basically just imperial soldiers with the name change. I can only suspect the reason for this is to keep people from having to worry about missing out on one of these formations. So they just decide, no, nah, we're not even gonna bother. We're not even gonna give them beat series entries. They're just the same thing as Imperial soldiers. Only they are not meant to appear on a belt. Oh yeah, sometimes when Shadow's dog blocks an attack for Shadow, his dog Interceptor will counterattack and does quite a bit of damage, even more so than what Sabin or Cyan can dish out. Who poisoned the river? And and then the third battle here is always set, is always set in place. It's going to be two soldiers. In an officer. I think the officer is a tad more difficult than the Templars before him, but other than that, they seem to be fundamentally the exact same enemy, but with a name change. Again, I'm assuming on the off chance people missed one of these encounters, even though you are required to fight the soldiers and the officers. 
But let's be honest, the reason they don't have a B-Serie entry is because they're the same things as the Imperial Soldiers and the Templars. And the reason why they don't have formations up here on the belt, same thing. Pretty much. There's no reason to... And the only reason for the name change is to keep them out of the belt. That's my theory, anyways. Anyway, Sadbin came out of this idea to go, hey, let's ride these magic tech armor. These magic tech armors. And Cyan has no idea. It is, has, is completely illiterate when it comes to technology. He, he, it hates and terrifies, and he hates and fears machinery. Yeah, he's pretty old-fashioned. That could actually explain why Doma fell so easily to the Imperials. Well, that and the poison. But, it doesn't really matter, it's not like Cyan is in a confused state. By the way, back there, we can't exit that way, because, well, poison. Which we are about to contradict a little bit later, but I digress. Yep, we can't go back to get those chests anymore. If you miss them, that's what I want to show off. Well, right there. This formation might be missable, it's a single magic tech armor. But to the best of my abilities, I've never been able to avoid this guy. So, if he is a missable formation, well, there you go. You need to pick him up. But if not, well, oh well. I don't know why there's so many mandatory magic tech armor formations, especially since Gao already starts with magic tech armor as a rage, as a default rage. I actually there is a potential theory about why that is, but but that requires some context, and I'm gonna wait until we get there before I mention it. Here they come! Stop them! And yep, I'm showing that all of these formations they cannot be skipped, and they all appear on the belt. By the way. Even, even the two magic tech armors that you would think would be missable, since it requires backtracking, it isn't missable. You will fight because, well, obviously we already fought them as a boss fight in Figaro, at Figaro Castle. That, sh that goes without saying. So, I'm just making my way out. I'm not getting the high potion drops that I really want from these guys, at least not yet. Just kind of a shame. But don't worry, we will get plenty of opportunities to make them drop them. So, yep. Yeah. Once again, mandatory. Can't skip it. Don't know why. It's. Don't know why there's so many of them. Don't. Because if they. If it's a. If it's a starting rage for Gal already, but I digress, and I got the two high potions from that fight, thankfully. And we are going to make our way to south of here. Well, technically it's kind of southeast, you gotta go south and around the bridge, cross and around the bridge, because to reach the forest there. So that's where we need to go, we need to make it to the Phantom Forest next. And we are on our way out, and we can never come back to the Imperial camp again. And by the way, the enemies that appear in this patch of desert are just the same enemies from Figaro Castle. Same formations, too. So don't bother. And I'm safe buffering. I'm not even gonna bother showing off Doma Castle at this point. It's under Imperial occupation, and they don't do and the soldiers don't do anything that would warrant showing them off. Kind of the same thing with Mount Colts in Lock Scenario, now that I think about it. Yeah, I can actually get some good draws here, but obviously it got sent into a couple of counters. I was originally going to close off here, but I was like, yeah, screw it. In like 20 minutes of 
deleted footage later, which I can't even reuse for bloopers down the road, because the audio was unsalvageable. And we want to only get to two encounters. You want the single ghost for later on, because either that or the three ghosts are mandatory, and I'd rather go for the single ghost in this regard. And proper, and then we want the rare encounter in either the first two areas or the last two areas. I prefer the last two areas because it increases the uh, your odds of actually getting the formation you want, but I'll make do with either one. It's pretty tough getting. It's actually pretty tough as is to just reach the Phantom Train with just two. With just the two formations we need. A lot of things can go wrong and the encounter rate in the Phantom Force is quite high. But, I managed to go through the third and fourth screens without getting to a single encounter, and there we are. A train? I thought all of Doma's railways have been destroyed in the fighting. There could be survivors. Let's take a look inside. And... Hey, looks like we can get in through here. So sad. Okay, why do characters just cut people off and not let them speak about this? Why is this a cliche? Just tell them what it is and don't go in. And tell them don't go in. It's that simple as Sir Sabin. What in the world? You must leave at once. This is a phantom train. Yeah, yeah, you could just. We must get off this train at once. And I end up getting to a random encounter here against three living dead. I suppose I should have saw that coming. Yes, this is a missable enemy formation, so I'm actually glad I got this one. I don't get it that often. They don't appear all that often, even though they're five six. Door won't open. I fear we are too late. What did you say this train was? This is the Phantom Train. It carries the souls of the departed to their final destination. You could jump off the back from the back. You're saying this train's giving us a one way ride to the afterlife? Must we find a way up? I'm afraid that is exactly where we will end up. Is this train is this train like driving a hundred miles an hour? You could just jump off from the back of the tracks. Just go to the, you know, I'm, here it is. I'm going to reach the, to the back of the train, and I'm going to jump off, see? Oh, wait. Let's talk to this guy first. He seems to want to accompany us. Bring the ghost along. I will explain this ghost in greater detail, but I'm just going to say right now, he sucks. Don't think you can just, yep, yeah, and here can't jump off. I, and the ghost responds right here so you can keep recruiting them. If you didn't recruit Shao, you could recruit two of these guys and one would be level 7, the other would be level 2. See, his stats suck and he's equipped with the leech for me. It basically means that any recovery items you give him does damage to him. I wonder what this is for. Why don't we see what happens when we pull it? Sir so Sabin, I think it would be best not to touch that. Oops, my hand must have slipped. What? <laughs> yeah, Cyan hates machinery. He is terrified and paranoid of machinery. So, yeah. As I was saying, Cy The ghosts? And the other thing worth knowing about the ghosts, too, is... They perma-die. You cannot recover their health in battle. It damages them rather than heals them because of that leech ring. I mean, you can heal them outside of battle just fine, but you can't, but it won't, but it will hurt or kill them to do so during battle. But another thing too is when he dies, he dies for good and you, and he leaves your party and there's a hidden tent right in that corner. So it's about the train. Yeah, we- yeah, Sayin already told us about this. The last thing I know about the ghost is- 
is that is its ability possessed, but I want to show that off later on. All I need to tell you is that once you successfully, the ghost leaves your party. If he dies, the ghost leaves your party. Healing during battle, it hurts them. So with that all the way, see? So with that all the way, we need to make our way off the train real soon. But w but will we be? But how will we be able to escape the phantom train? And when will my brand new microphone come in through the field? I'll see you next time in the ne in my Let's Play Final Fantasy VI Advanced series. This is Mike Gordon signing off.